although it was an Italian naval architect who was one of the first to suggest a dreadnought-style layout for battleships, Italy was quite slow in building its first dreadnought. This was partially down to their shipyard's slow rate of construction, and also due to the odd design choices made by Italian naval staff at the time. Many Italian ships would sacrifice armour or firepower for speed, a trend which continued right into the Second World War, and the preceding Regina Elena class was no different. It was armed with a pair of main battery turrets, but these only held one gun each compared to the twin turrets of most pre-dreadnoughts. However, it was very fast, achieving 22 knots using only the obsolete triple expansion engines. Due to the fact that Italy really only needed to operate a fleet in the Mediterranean, many of their ships would carry significantly less fuel than designs operated by fleets with worldwide commitments. This weight could then be diverted into other features such as engines for more speed, or guns for he a heavier armament on a given displacement compared to longer range designs. Some of these design choices were reflected in the Dante Alieri. It was relatively fast, almost making 23 knots on its turbine engines, faster than other first-generation dreadnoughts, but it was built at a time when the leading nations were finishing their last second-generation dreadnoughts and the Royal Navy was moving on to the first super dreadnoughts, so the main battery didn't include any wing turrets, but also did not adopt super-firing turrets. Instead, the superstructure was divided, and four triple turrets armed with 12-inch guns were evenly spaced along the hull, a design which would also be developed in Russian dreadnoughts of the same period. A mixed battery of relatively light 4.7 and 3-inch guns, and a few torpedo tubes would round out the ship's armament. The turret layout meant forward and rear firepower was somewhat reduced, but compared to most second-generation dreadnoughts, the broadside was a full 12 guns over a very wide arc. The main guns themselves also shared some characteristics common with a number of Italian battleships. They were very long weapons, with a high muzzle velocity which gave them better than average armour penetration, but at the same time, they were relatively slow firing and could be wildly inaccurate. A problem that showed up in almost every long, high-velocity naval gun developed in the battleship era. One minor advance was the placement of some of the secondary armament in turrets as opposed to casemate batteries. This gave them a wider field of fire and kept them usable in high sea conditions compared to most secondary batteries of the World War I period. Belt armour was somewhat lacking though. In order to get the speed and weapons loadout required, the Italians had sacrificed protection, and the 10-inch thick main belt and turret armour was well below the standard for battleships built in the same period. Following the Italian entry into World War I, the ship was part of the Italian fleet that spent most of the war daring the Austro-Hungarian fleet to come out and fight. This never happened, and so the most exciting part of the ship's career ended up being present at the bombardment of the port of Durazzo. After the war, she was used to test various new technologies, such as turret-mounted aircraft catapults, new fire control systems, and as a transport for various important political figures. However, Italy's economy had been badly weakened in World War I, and in 1928 the decision was made to scrap her to reduce the upkeep costs of the Italian fleet. A comment or suggestion for a ship to review? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions. That's it for this video, thanks for watching, if you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.